y'all. I want to talk a bit about today on the role of fear in mast cell activation and histamine intolerance. And if you're dealing with any of these conditions, whether they've been diagnosed or you just suspect them, um, I don't have to tell you how much feelings of anxiety play a role, right? Um, and that's because when you have a histamine release in the body, it triggers inflammation in the brain. And it's a certain kind of inflammation that can cause very potent psychiatric symptoms. And this is purposeful, right? This is purposeful by, by the body. It is a warning signal, right? It is your body saying something is wrong. Pay attention. Something is wrong, right? And yeah, it really feels like something's wrong, right? The problem is if you don't have answers, if you can't pin it down, if doctors are not being helpful, um, if you don't understand it, now you're just stuck in this loop of anxiety and worry, right? So this could be obsessive compulsive um, behaviors or thoughts. This could be like constant ruminating worry, just kind of that generalized anxiety. It can be panic attacks. Um, that's very common. Um, it can also be what I call dread attacks. Um, this is, I mean, for me, this was one of the more debilitating uh, experiences I had when I was very ill. And um, it actually is a symptom of anaphylaxis. I mean, if you look up any, like, even totally conventional, like, uh, database that lists the symptoms of anaphylaxis, one of them is an impending sense of doom. Like, you do feel like, oh my gosh, I am dying. My body is shutting down. Like, your blood pressure plummets, your adrenaline surges. Um, it is a really scary state for the body to be in. It is like the ultimate crisis state of like, there is a problem and we can't fix it, right? So it is your body being on high alert, like we need to change something right now. Something is very wrong here, right? Which is often why people who develop mast cell and histamine issues, like it is... It is like a later stage of immune imbalance. It's usually not the first warning sign that your body gets. Even though I know a lot of people feel like it hit them out of the blue, especially in the last few years with some of the things going on, um, some people really felt like it hit them out of nowhere. But the reality is, if I go back and look at those people's health history, I can see the warning signs building up, right? I can see like, oh, here's where your body tried to tell you here and here and here. And Sometimes it's like just little things adding up, adding up, adding up until suddenly you've got this full-blown syndrome, right? This huge constellation of symptoms. So basically your body has been trying to fight off an invader or a threat or a problem for a very long time and often multiple. And I want to really go back here because this often did not start with us. We can look back like multiple generations and we can see where these things often start. So because of intergenerational toxic exposure, like we are carrying our grandparents' heavy metal load, right? And then whatever we've been exposed to in our life, right, on top of that. And in a lot of ways, like, environmental regulations are a lot better now than they used to be, right? So we probably actually, in a lot of ways, are getting, well, in some ways at least, probably getting less toxic exposure than, like, our grandparents and great-grandparents. But, like, now we have the accumulation effect, right? Because we get this passed down. <laughs> so our bodies, our bodies have never had to deal with a load of toxins this extreme before, right? This is a evolutionary anomaly. We know how to deal with low level toxicity in nature, right? Um, and, you know, this is a, a whole different ballgame. And the way that toxins are stacked on each other, right? Like, we don't really understand what happens when you mix heavy metals with forever chemicals, with pharmaceutical medications, right? With antibiotics, like, we don't know but we're doing a science experiment in our bodies right now. And so our bodies are kind of in shock intergenerationally with this accumulation because everything 
that our grandparents and parents were not able to detoxify themselves. They were not able to release. It was given to us. And anyone that knows about trauma might see some parallels in what I'm saying. And I think it's really important that we cannot separate these issues, right? We even know that people with heavy metal toxicity and low levels of nutrients, especially minerals and B vitamins that allow us to detoxify those, those heavy metals, are more likely to develop psychiatric conditions, even, even psychiatric conditions that develop from life circumstances, right? So there are, of course, some mental illnesses that don't seem to have a clear trigger from life, right? Um, but uh, even with the ones that do, it's like, oh, you had these traumatic experiences and now you have these symptoms. Not everyone who goes through those experiences is going to develop those mental health conditions, right? Like PTSD is a perfect example. Two people could go through the same experience and one person develops PTSD and that person does not. Some of that has to do with your toxic load and how safe does your body already feel when you encountered this trauma? Right? And so all of these things wind together. If our bodies do not feel safe physiologically because we are full of toxic metals and then we are full of dysbiosis, different microbes that are growing, yeasts and funguses that are growing, trying to buffer us from this toxicity, trying to clean us out, these parasites that are trying to clean us out. I don't want to get too in the weeds here with this. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, go back and watch some of my other videos on heavy metals and yeast and detox, our bodies are doing their best to buffer us in an extreme situation that we have found ourselves in. And this has been building now for generations. And so now we're born, we are full of metals, we are full of yeasts and parasites trying to buffer us from those, but those release these chemicals that cause us to feel imbalanced and unsafe in other ways, right? And then what happens? We are raised by people with these mineral imbalances, with these unresolved traumas. We live in a society that actively represses emotion, right? Or only allows very particular expressions of emotion that tend to dig people into really unhealthy patterns of expression, right? I mean, the amount of clients who I work with who resonate with the concept of disorganized attachment and definitely look into this if you don't know what this is. And I have a background as a trauma therapist, so I've worked with these issues a lot. I teach a lot of my intensive coaching clients about attachment style and how to heal a, a disrupted, um, more anxious attachment style. And the most, the most um, difficult attachment style to recover from is disorganized attachment. And this is when you got very inconsistent or mixed messages growing up and people with dysregulated microbiomes and a high toxic load tend to be very emotionally dysregulated or struggle with addiction and that causes us to not feel like we have a secure anchor point and so we have to think about all the things that makes us feel safe in the world we are getting an incredible amount of minerals from our environment right? We have a liver and kidneys and lymph system that flushes toxins out quickly and easily, right? We, um, we feel like we have a secure anchor point, right? We have a safe haven in the womb, held by our parents, right? Breastfeeding, firm, like this is our safe haven. And we are not going to believe that there is safety out in the world unless we have that grounding early on telling us, yep, when you're upset, I'm here and I hold you. Yep, when you're scared, you can come home and there will always be a place for you. You're always welcome here. Right? There are very early messages that we either get or we don't get and it's not to blame our parents for all our problems. Like, this is not what I'm saying. Um, they had their own issues too, right? But the reality is, this is often the effect of being raised by very dysregulated people who had a lot of their own mental and physical health issues, probably their own disorganized attachments and early trauma, 
right, that they didn't resolve. But things get passed down through families until they get dealt with. And I am talking about toxic load, I am talking about the microbiome, and I am talking about trauma and emotions, right? And so many of my clients, when we really start delving into this stuff, are like, oh my gosh, I think I'm feeling grief that like my grandma couldn't feel. You know, oh my gosh, I'm detoxing the lead my grandpa was exposed to at work, right? So we have to look at this big picture perspective and we have to recognize that literally from every angle we can think about, our bodies have never felt safe. And so if our bodies do not feel safe, what is it going to do? It's going to overcompensate by responding to everything as a threat. And that is like the crux of what is going on with mast cell activation and histamine intolerance. Um, it's also really what's going on with autoimmunity in a lot of ways too, but I'm just kind of focusing on, there's a huge overlap of course, right? Um, mast cells degranulate when they encounter what it is perceiving as a threat in our tissues. That response is so that it can inflame that tissue to pull out that toxin and repair any damage. So it's an important response. We all get it when we get a cut or whatever, right? Like it's, we're gonna cold. It's an important response with mast cell activation and histamine overload. Like this response is so imbalanced and it's happening in such an extreme way that I am seeing more and more extreme cases. And what do most clinicians do? They either say, oh, you're a psychiatric case right? Like you just have anxiety, here's the antidepressants, which easily make things worse. Um, or they're like, I can't make sense of why you're reacting to all the supplements I give you, right? Because that's usually the first line of defense is like, oh, here, take these medications to stabilize you or in a functional doctor or a functional nutritionist, like, here's all these supplements, let's detox you, let's replenish nutrients, right? Which is not that that's a wrong approach. I mean, like I'm talking about, like, we do need to detox right? We do need to replenish nutrients. That is what is going to make your body feel safe again, right? But we can't just pile on because now your body is like, what is this supplement? I don't know what this is. You know, um, hey, I'm not feel safe enough. I can't just like flush all these toxins out. You're forcing me to flush toxins out. I'm not ready to flush out. And then things get worse, right? And pretty soon those clinicians are like, I don't know what to do with you. You're too complex. Like, I can't make sense of your symptoms. And they fire you to make us feel safe either and a lot of people have come to me and felt so betrayed by the clinicians that they work with because they don't feel safe they don't feel understood they um yeah it's just it, it just feeds into the same turn right you are the victim the world is against you right you're not safe nothing is safe so you don't feel safe in the world you don't feel still safe in your body you don't feel safe with other people. The other thing I see is people don't know how to connect intimately. They don't know how to be vulnerable. They don't know how to share their feelings, right? It's never been safe to you. So your body's never been safe to detox. Your body's never been safe to replenish. Your body is simply just overrun with things like candida and parasites. And it's just trying to buffer as much of the damage as it can. Um, and you have trauma and tension just stuck in your body, right? Fear is the crux of it. I am not safe. That is what your body is screaming to you. So we have to start so slow and so gentle. And we have to befriend our body. And we have to let it know, look, I know you've been betrayed and victimized since before you were born. Like, this is not all on you, right? This is a long-term issue that is probably three, if not more, generations back. Um, and so the utmost understanding and connection is needed. And we do have to rebalance the microbiome, and we do have to detox you, and we do have to replenish nutrients. We have to make your body feel safe at all angles, but it's not going to happen if you believe there is something wrong with your body and your body is just trying to attack you and your body is just trying to kill you, right? That is not what is happening. I don't care how serious your symptoms are. Yes, you can get into these cytokine storms and you can get into these anaphylactic spirals that are objectively very dangerous, right? And people do die. So I don't want to 
make anything feel like light and fluffy that's not. No, these things can get very serious, but it is your body doing everything it can to save you. And sometimes that gets into a spiral that gets out of control and fears. But that is not what your body is trying to do. The antidote to fear is safety and compassion and understanding. And if you have not gotten that from the world, you have not gotten that from your family, you can give it to yourself. And I can give it to you while you're still learning to do that for yourself. So that's the experience I want people to have in our coaching programs. I want you to feel held and understood and to be worked with at your own pace, right? And at the same time, we have to break the patterns of fear that your body is stuck in. And that's why I use trauma-releasing exercises. And that's why we do the neuromeditation coaching. The nervous system regulation and the brain retraining is so important. Um, but again, we have to do it gently without gaslighting, right? With the utmost gentleness and compassion. So I hope that makes sense about how fear is the real issue here. And the antidote is to create safety any way we can, from every angle we can. And you can get there, I promise. Even if you're like, I've never felt safe in my life. How am I going to start now? I'm telling you, there is a way. You have to believe that. And you have to surrender to that. There is a different way to look at your body. There's a different way to look at your illness. And that is where the true path to healing is. So check out our programs. Reach out to us. We're here to offer you another way.